Alright then gang, so now you know a little bit about how data is structured in MongoDB, I want to start playing around with it on our computer. So back when we installed MongoDB on our computer in lesson two of the series, this GUI tool called MongoDB Compass was also installed for us. Now for the most part in the future, when you're working with MongoDB, you're probably going to be doing that directly from the shell or from an application in your code. But for learning purposes, and also sometimes to visualize your data as you create it, this GUI Compass tool is really helpful because it's going to show us all of our databases that we create, all of the collections in those databases and all of the documents in those as well. It's also going to let us easily add new documents, update existing documents and delete them too. So in this lesson, I just want to give you a quick tour of the UI, how to get up and running with a database and how to add some data to it as well. So make sure you have Compass open first of all, and the welcome screen should look something like this. And over here, you're going to see an import asking for your connection string. Now, a connection string is a special MongoDB URL that we use to connect to a MongoDB cluster. Now, if you were to use a MongoDB service like Atlas, which allows you to make a cluster online and have your database hosted online, then you could paste the connection string for that cluster in here and MongoDB Atlas would give you that then MongoDB Compass could connect to that and you could use this GUI tool to interact with it and see the data stored inside it. However, for now at least, we're not working with an online hosted MongoDB service like Atlas. And instead, we're working with MongoDB locally on our computer. So to connect to the MongoDB service installed on our computer, you just have to click connect without adding any connection string whatsoever. And when you do that, it's going to very quickly connect to our local MongoDB service and list out any databases that we have. Now, if this didn't work, make sure you have the MongoDB service running on your computer first of all. Now to do that on Windows, I just need to type services down here and then click on the services option. And then in the services window, I need to scroll down the list of services and try and find one called MongoDB server. And I need to make sure that that's running because if it's not running, then MongoDB compass won't be able to connect to it. And obviously then it won't work. So when you find it, just make sure the status of that service says running next to it. If it doesn't, you can start and stop a service by right clicking it and choosing the relevant option. All right. So now we have MongoDB Compass running and it's connected to our local running MongoDB service. So when we first connect to MongoDB using Compass, we're going to see whatever database we currently have. Now, when you do this for the first time on your computer, you're probably going to see some databases already listed here, even though we've not created any ourselves yet. But these databases are pre-made by MongoDB. For example, the local database contains startup log data. So we can head into that by clicking it. And when you do that, you might see a collection called startup log. And if I click into that, then I'm going to see a few documents. In my case, these documents represent each time whenever I've started the service up. So you can also see all of the databases you currently have listed over here on the left as well. And you can switch between all of them. And at the very bottom of that sidebar, we can see this plus icon, which we can press if we want to make a new database. So if I press that, it's going to ask me now for a database name. So let's imagine we're making a database for a bookstore website. So I might call my database bookstore. I remember inside a database, we can have multiple different collections, right? For different types of data. So I might have a books collection to store book data. I might also have an author's collection to store author data. And we might have a customer's collection to store customer data, etc. Now, when we first try to make a new database in Compass, it's going to ask us for our first collection as well. So let's call this books to store some book data. And then we can go ahead and skip the checkboxes and just create the collection. So when we do that, we can see we're currently now inside the books collection. And on the left, we can see our new bookstore database and inside that the books collection as well. Now, if I click on the database name, it's going to take us to the database overview screen for that database. And on here is where you'd see all of the different collections in that database. So we can see the books one, but we could also make a new collection by clicking this create button right here, create collection. For now though, let's head back into the books collection and try adding some data. 
Now, before I make any data whatsoever, you'll notice also these databases down here, MyDB and testing. Now, you're not going to see those databases. These are databases that I've created. So what I'm going to do to avoid confusion is just delete these. Now, to delete a database, you just have to click on this trash icon right here next to the database you want to delete. Then it's going to ask you to type out the name of the database. I can never be bothered, so I always copy and paste and then we can drop the database. Same for this one. I'm going to delete that, copy and paste testing and then drop the database, okay? So now we just have this custom database right here. You should also see admin, config, and local as well. But this is the database we just created. And now what we're gonna do is add some data inside this books collection. All right then, so say I want to add a new document to this collection. All I have to do inside Compass is go to add data, and then we want to insert a document. Remember, that's what these records inside a collection are called documents. Now, when we do that, you'll notice, first of all, this thing right here, and it's already created this kind of ID field. Now, that's MongoDB creating this ID for us, but if I wanted to, I could delete that, and when I insert it later, at that point, MongoDB is still gonna insert an ID field for me as well. So then, let's create this. Remember, it's like a JSON object, so we have our opening and closing curly braces right here and then for the property name in the quotes we're going to say author first of all and in fact no before author let's give the book a title eh? all right so the title of this one is going to be name of the wind and then we'll do an author so let me scoot in and we'll say author and that is Patrick Rothfuss still waiting for his third book and then after that let's also do say a pages property totally guessing here i'm going to say 500 pages and then after that we'll do a genre or rather genres property because what i'd like to do is make it so that this is an array of different genres so let's just say okay the first one is fantasy and then let's think oh we'll just make up a genre magical whatever so we have two genres right there as well all right so let's do one more property after that so comma at the end and then this is going to be a rating property out of 10 and we'll give this a rating of nine it's a really good book all right then so if i try to insert this now it's going to create that document for me and we can see this object id value right here for the underscore id property so this is something that mongodb has created for us awesome so we have now one document inside this collection. Now, if we wanted to, we could also add multiple documents at once. Again, we just go to insert document and it says right here, paste one or more documents right here. So that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is just delete that and I'm gonna paste in these books right here. Now, this time, since we're adding a few different books, notice I've put these different objects inside an array because we're adding an array of data, okay? So make sure you do that if you're adding more than one. So we have three books here. The first one, The Final Empire. The second one is The Way of Kings. And then the third one is The Call of the Weird. So now all we have to do is insert, to insert all of those three books at once. And we can see all those now inside the collection. Awesome. Now, another couple of things I wanna show you. If we hover over this document right here, we see these icons on the right. So we can delete the document by clicking on this trash icon right here. And we can also edit the document by clicking on this pencil icon. So if I wanted to click on this and change, for example, this pages, I can just click on the value for the pages and change it to something else like 600. And then click on update and it's gonna update it for us, okay? Now we can also, kind of filter the data as well. And filters are gonna be something that we see later on when we're using the shell more often. So basically a filter looks like an object like this, you can see with curly braces, where we specify the field that we wanna filter by. So for example, we might want to filter by the rating to get all books that are rated a nine, which would be this one and this one right here. And to do that, I can just say, curly braces, the field name, which is rating, like so, and what we want that to equal, which is going to be nine. So if I say find now, then we can see it gets us back only the documents where the rating is nine. So we've applied a filter 
to our query, if you like. And these are going to make much more sense later on when we're either querying data from the shell or from our application in the second half of the course as well. But anyway, we can filter data like this as well. So that if we have a website where we want to show all of the best rated books, we can do. All right. So this is the basics of this Compass GUI tool. We will be using it a little bit as we go on to visualize the data like this in a simple and easy way. Next up though, I'm gonna move over to the MongoDB shell and teach you how to get that up and running as well.